New York has a huge problem brewing. This immense dilemma is so serious that it could involve the eventual mass migration of millions of New Yorkers inland in as little as 100 years. Sounds crazy, right? It is not. And it all has to do with climate change, rising sea levels, and the fact that the city is also sinking. And no, it is not a climate change gig or propaganda, as some deniers like to call it. It is as real as science can get, and the city is trying to raise nearly $120 billion to protect the city from floods while delaying the inevitable for as long as possible. New York is a coastal city and quite low. Most of it is one or two meters above sea level, and it is also sinking under its own weight, which is accelerating the dangers the city is facing from storms and tides as the sea levels keep rising. This called for a massive mega project that involves building a seawall with gates that will act as a barrier during storm surges and when the sea levels increase. The issue is so urgent that the federal government plans to fund as much as 65% of the project, if not all of it, and has dispatched the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in 2017 to conduct studies in preparation for the mega seawall. What is happening to New York? What is the solution? And is it really effective or will it be a mere waste of money? Stay tuned for the details. Let's start with the problem. Like all low elevation coastal areas on planet Earth, New York is facing a huge problem. The immediate problem is that storm surges are getting nastier. In fact, the city does not have to get hit by a powerful hurricane to flood. Regular storms are already becoming a problem. Storm Sandy, which hit the city in 2012 and wreaked havoc, was evidence that things are getting worse faster than the city can cope because the oceans are getting warmer every year. If a similar storm were to hit New York today, as many as 3 million New Yorkers would have to be evacuated as floods swarm the city. The second problem has to do with the fact that the planet's ice and snow mass in the North and South Poles and in glaciers are melting faster than ever, and the sea levels are rising every year. Intensive research points out that hurricanes that have hit the New York City area since 1970 are more intense or have larger wind fields, producing higher storm surges and flood risk. Now, the city can expect a major flood every five years, especially since 2023 is officially the hottest year on record. And scientists are saying that warmer oceans and the planet as a whole are the new norm. The damage by such floods to the city's infrastructure and economy can range between $100 and $150 billion, and the number of casualties can be in the hundreds and even thousands if something is not done to mitigate the effects of these floods. Many cities around the world have either built or plan to build seawalls to tackle this problem, and New York is no different. The plan for building the New York Harbor storm surge barrier has been around for more than a decade. This proposed flood barrier system should protect the New York, New Jersey Harbor estuary from storm surges. The final design and location of the barrier system have not been finalized. However, the main proposed system would consist of one barrier located across the mouth of Lower New York Bay, between Sandy Hook and Rockaway, and a second on the Upper East River to provide a ring of protection to most of the bi-state region. Alternatively, the southern barrier could be located between Coney Island and Staten Island. A storm surge barrier at this location, although half as long, would require supplemental barriers across the entrances to Jamaica Bay and the Arthur Kill. As for the long-term problem of rising sea levels, the system has to be designed in a way that enables engineers to increase its height in the future, as the situation dictates and also conduct large-scale coastline adjustments. Flood walls, levees, and beach dune building projects might also be necessary in low elevation areas flanking the barrier system, which would act as natural barriers in case the sea levels rise faster than expected. The system would also include large gates in order to maintain water circulation, smooth flow of inner drainage, and the passage of ships, including large cargo ships. The issue of the environmental impact of such a massive barrier system on marine life in the area was and still is the main concern among civic leaders and New Yorkers in general. 
The problem is that even the best solution cannot guarantee low impact. However, to mitigate the negative effects, it is proposed that the barrier's floodgates would be closed only for a few hours before, during, and immediately after a major storm surge. This would mean that 99% of the time, the floodgates would remain open so as to minimally hinder tides, harbor flushing, river discharge, fish migration, and healthy marine ecosystem functioning. It is important to clarify here that there is a huge and rather heated ongoing debate about the proposed barrier system. Not everyone, including some civic leaders and politicians, believes that oceans are becoming warmer and the sea levels are rising, and thus believes that other less expensive solutions to storm surges as more feasible. However, the current U.S. administration believes that any barrier system to protect New York from storm surges must also double as future protection against rising sea levels. Hence, we believe that the barrier system will be built despite the immense cost. Interior drainage issues were also raised since the barrier system will also limit the discharge from the river or estuary to the ocean while the barrier is closed, while also cutting off interior stormwater drainage or overland and flow. The proposed solution for this issue is the diversion of interior drainage flow to new pump stations in order to limit potential induced flooding from the closure of floodgates during storms. All of this leads us to ask, how are such massive seawalls built? Seawalls such as the one proposed for New York have to be extremely strong and last for many decades. This barrier must be able to mitigate damage and disturbance associated with powerful waves, daily tides, tsunamis, hurricanes, and other natural disasters. Seawalls are usually constructed using reinforced concrete, but can also be made of steel only. When seawalls are constructed, they can have seaward faces that are concave, vertical, or stepped. They are also built with defensive materials referred to as revetments, which are laid on their slopes. Seawalls can be as huge and long as engineers and project financiers desire. Additionally, they may include keys and landing platforms for unloading and loading vessels. Interestingly, they also make great platforms for wave energy projects and can literally be coupled as power stations. The proposed seawall for New York has to be made from steel-reinforced saltwater-resistant concrete because experts believe that it must be designed to be as high as 10 meters above the current sea level since it is also aimed to protect the city from the future rise in sea levels even after 100 years from construction. Such seawall has to be at least 8 meters thick at the base and up to 4 meters at the top. In many ways, these walls are similar to dams. Intensive seabed excavation must take place before piles are installed. Such piles must be driven many meters below the seabed to ensure rigidity and solid structural integrity. We can only guess that the engineers will choose to have the actual wall built as hollow cubic sections, each up to 50 meters long and designed in a way to attach together like Legos. Each section would be a hollow concrete cube with walls thickness up to one meter and an open top. These hollow concrete cubes would be transported to their designated location via barges and lowered in place by powerful sea cranes. The cubes can then be attached to the piles via bolting and filled with sand, then covered with a concrete slab. To prevent erosion at the bottom and the potential formation of hollow areas below sections of the seawall, underwater rubble mounds on both sides can be added, which would eliminate such potential issues. Do you think this seawall idea for New York is good or bad and why? Let us know in the comments section and please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thank you.